friends good day to all i am glad to welcome you to my channel and today we have the second lesson from the cycle of lessons on how to learn to draw with watercolor it is called a tone stretch in one color and to do this i need to prepare a sheet and draw six such strips for the thickness of the ruler i make them the gap between these strips I have is one and a half centimeters. If you have something different somewhere, the stripes are a little wider, a little narrower. The distance between them is a little wider, a little narrower, then it's not so important. It's okay, eh? Then I will need to fix the sheet on plexiglass. You know, unfortunately, I forgot about it and remembered only when I drew the first strip. So it will be necessary, as in the last task, to moisten the entire back surface of the sheet so that it fits tightly, well on the hand glass. In principle, the moistening of the leaf is not so important to us now, but it will just be a leaf if it is not fixed at all. It will walk on your surface like this. Or, you can take a paper tape and tape a sheet on the surface on which you are drawing Why is it important to secure the sheet? Specifically, in this task, we need the slope of your surface to be at least 10 degrees. That is, under a tablet, a stretcher, I do not know what you are drawing on, under plexiglass. You put, for example, ordinary masking tape on top of it. He's about 5 to 7 centimeters tall. That's what we need to achieve. So what am I doing? We need to take a pure color, and while I'm driving, add more water each time to this drop. Here we should always have a drop, as you can see, and the leaf is dry. I'm going to make the first strip like this, I'm going to take a little water on the second strip so that you can see what I'm doing. That is, every time I savor the rest of this liquid on the brush, take clear water and add a little bit to the available drop and slowly take it down. That is, there is always this drop, it is present in me, and gradually down. Maybe now it's not so clearly visible on the video, but when it dries, it will be visible. In other words, it is getting lighter, lighter towards the bottom, and we need to eventually come to an almost transparent color, so that the water is a transparent color. That is, at the beginning, I take a saturated green without water. In this case, I have green. You can choose any color, any three colors that you like. Well, now my color has dried up a little, and you can see this iridescence of tone. You know, I had a leaf walking back and forth. I still decided to moisten the back surface, so that it lay as tightly on the surface. The fact is that there is also a slope, and when you draw, the leaf can simply slide down. I may not be able to see the tilt so much, but it is present. I also put my tape on top, under the bottom of the board, and now I have a leaf at a certain angle. From above I moisten it with water, but if you wet it with water, then do not forget to blot it with a napkin or toilet paper. And only then, we additionally do not wet the strips with water. That is, in fact, your surface should be dry. I just smooth it out like this, so that I have it well stuck to the sheet, and now there were no problems. If bubbles appear, you get rid of them under the sheet. And now I'm going to take the second color. I have this golden dark, 
and I will start acting on the same principle. That is, first, I take the orange minimum of water. That is, I need to dial a straight pure color at the beginning, but this drop, which you constantly lead down, and we always have it. I put some water, so that you can clearly see what I'm doing. Except I have orange. I mix it well, I take a lot of color, I take it thickly, very thick paint, at the beginning. And some gap is purely this color. Now I'm trying to dial, so that there is a drop to the bottom. We need it to form. Here I take more color. A little water, and now I no longer dive with a brush into a cuvette with paint. I only use a brush and water. I washed the brush, took some water, put some water back, yes, in this droplet, held it down a little. And so it is until the end. This is a very, you know, important exercise. I took the brush again, washed it slightly, took more clean water, added it to this drop, and lead, and that's all according to this analogy, you do the first three stripes. For example, you are drawing, you will write some kind of sunset, and the sky should be redder towards the horizon. This is what you will need, that's what you're doing now, practice. This skill is very important in all sunsets, sunrises, but not only in this. Many times in watercolors, it is found both in landscapes and in still lifes, no matter what you write, then when you need to stretch from one color to another, or from one color to a lighter color. And now look, I have it more just so transparent has become. I'm leading her. Up to almost the same as a tear. It has a light, light shade of orange at the bottom. You do the same thing with the third strip. I took the blue color. You can do this task. I have only the first three stripes. The second three stripes will have a slightly different task. You can stretch all six stripes from dark to light. Now I have made a blue one on the same principle. And the next three stripes, you will have a slightly different task. It's a little more complicated. I think you've already guessed what's going on. In other words, we need to do exactly the opposite, from a light tone to a rich green. In this case, I have green, I repeated the colors, then there will be orange, we come, and then blue. And look here, I'm already using the palette. I took a palette and put it in a jug, that's exactly the palette, I use it only for assignments, when I paint landscapes. Still lifes with watercolors, I always have a flat palette. It's usually just an ordinary piece of paper, an ordinary sheet of paper, because it's more convenient to look at colors and mix, but I'll talk about this later. For now, let's focus on this assignment. The fact is that I need to have some volume of water, and I have it on my palette. And first, I change the tone in the palette, that is, I take more paint, mix this drop on the palette, add more color to it, and then only take it from the palette and lead it down, so I add color to the drop. If you make a transparent droplet on top, 
and then take the color from the brush from the cuvette with paint and add it. Then here it can be a little dangerous. Of course, you can try. You can try to do this, but you understand it's difficult for us to regulate. At the end, I already take only from a cuvette with paint. I just need it to be a rich color, and I already come in pure green in a rich color. Well, now everything seems to have done fine. Then I somehow got it. Either I touched it or something. A little bit at the end of it. There's a flaw there. Well, it's okay. You don't judge yourself strictly either. It may not work out at first. This is not the easiest task, but you need to learn it. I'll tell you honestly, if you master this exercise, if you learn how to do it well and back and forth in different directions, do these stretches from dark to light, from light to dark, then you will make a big contribution to yourself as a watercolorist, and many things you have they will get better already. I thought that probably there won't be exercises all the time in a row. I will somehow dilute them with light landscapes that we will draw together with you. For example, at least once a month, landscapes too, they will go from simple to complex. And of course the tasks. There will always be tasks. This is very important. This is the basis. And here's the truth. I honestly recommend that you still do these tasks if you want to learn how to paint in watercolor. Maybe you don't fully understand why this is necessary now, how it will affect, but I just want to tell you, as a teacher, it will really affect. I do the second strip, according to the same principle, constantly adding more and more color to the palette. Well, look, I'm putting some water on the palette now. Yes. Here I have it very, very clear water at the beginning. I'll tell you again what I'm doing. Then, I dive with a brush into a ditch with paint, add this paint again to the palette, into my pile of water here. And I don't know how to say it, but you get it. And then, I take from the palette, only from the palette, and directly here on a piece of paper, at my work, I add this drop of water, to this at work. And the slope is very important. You should have this drop in this strip gradually drain down itself. You help her a little bit, but as if the main thing is that she drains herself. This is not the only task that we will have to stretch in one color. We will try to do the same thing again, but on different volumes. Not a narrow line, but it will be such a wide one. But that's in the future. Now you need to learn this. It is not necessary to make only six strips. You can make as many as you need. If you feel that you are not doing very well yet, then do more. Here is the green dried up. I think you understand what I meant. That's where some kind of streak of dark color appeared at the bottom. Well, here is such a task. If you like this assignment, please like it. I will be very grateful to you. Write any comment. If you are too lazy to write comments, just put any smiley in the comment. This is really very important to me. This helps to promote the channel and gives me an incentive to record new videos. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.